As a jewelry manufacturer, we've been producing jewelry to designer jewelers around the world who then themselves stock their jewelry in some high-end stores. And so quality has historically always been an integral part of our business. And therefore, we're used to ensuring that my quality control team at my manufacturing plant apply stringent measures when it comes to quality checking goods before it's sent out to customers. When goods arrive to one of our headquarters, whether it's London or the US, we do a final check of the quality of pieces before we then send them to our customers. One would of course hope and presume that all jewelry manufacturers carry out um, a good quality control process, not only at the end of production, but throughout the entire production process. But sometimes that's not always the case. And so I think it's also really good for you to be vigilant when you receive goods. So today I thought it might be helpful to share with you the same steps and procedures that we carry out when we quality check our goods before shipping to customers. And for you to be aware of some common quality defects that might crop up when you check your goods. Stay watching and I'll be giving you some final tips on how to communicate or illustrate some of the quality defects to your supplier. And if you're new here, hi, I'm Kim, owner of Thai Design Distributors. We have a manufacturing plant in Thailand where we specialize in producing high-end silver and gold jewelry for designers. And if you haven't already, please watch my introduction video, which tells you a little bit about my background and the purpose of this channel. So let's get to it. My production team have over the last few decades certainly come across a variety of jewelry defects during production. And I'm not going to lie, when you're manufacturing hundreds of handmade jewelry pieces, sometimes you're not going to achieve 100% perfect production. Regulating and implementing quality improvement takes a lot of time, especially in a very complex production process such as jewelry manufacturing. And as directors, it's taken us years and even decades, and we're still constantly improving in certain areas. However, as a daily practice, the main thing is that our workers are able to identify any defects that crop up, rectify it as soon as possible, find a solution so that that doesn't affect the turnaround or the scheduled deadline that we have ready to send to our customers. However, sometimes that doesn't always happen in the jewelry industry. So let me share with you a few common quality defects. So the first one is scratches or marks. Check on the items to see whether there are any scratches, um, whether that's a one-off scratch in a certain area or if it's caused by heavy polishing on the polishing motor. And if that is the case and you're looking at very fine scratches, um, typically going in the one direction. Porosity, so these are porous or holes which Sometimes it's caused by either a low quality casting machine or improper settings or preparation of the casting in the wax or investing material. The issue can be very complex. Now, if I was to see this in a lot of jewelry pieces, I would question whether the manufacturer has the technology and expertise to diagnose these problems so that it doesn't become a constant issue. Now, porosity isn't obvious to the naked eye. So a lot of manufacturers even use the microscope in order to really see deep into the metal. Usually porosity occurs during casting um, as opposed to stamped items and it is hard to polish especially if the holes are quite deep into the surface of the metal. Fire stain. You're likely to see this more in silver because it derives from copper alloy um, and that is copper that reacts with oxygen which creates that kind of stain colour. Copper plus heat plus oxygen creates this fire stain and it can come about from the casting itself or from soldering, say if the piece is required to be under the flame um, and so that heat can sometimes create fire stain. It's harder to establish where fire stain um, has come from um, but typically you can polish it out. Cracking. Now this can be caused by a wrong setting in temperature in the casting or the way it was put on the wax tree. The skill in putting wax pieces on a wax tree requires a lot of skill and it's almost an art form. If there isn't a full flow of metal or if there is a weak spot in a particular area or the wrong temperature is going to that weak spot, then that can create cracking. So there are other quality tests that you can implement as well when you get your goods. Play around with them, um, test them. For example, one of our main production items um, that we manufacture are lockets. So with lockets, you want to make sure that you can open and close. You hear a really nice click sound when you close it. Test the hinge, make sure that it's not stiff, that it just um, open and closes quite smoothly. 
With earrings, you want to make sure that they are symmetrical, um, drop earrings are aligned with each other. If it's a stud earring, you want to test the post at the back, make sure that it's soldered really well and that it is, um, let's say, centrally located and each piece is consistent. With chains, what I like to do is with my index and thumb, just one it along the chain just to feel whether there's a kink. Um, normally, if there is one, you'll feel it. Just check that you know the length is how you want it and that the jump ring is soldered well together, whether it's a bolt ring or lobster clasp that you've got, you wanna check the clasp, make sure that it springs um, and bounces back nicely. With stones, you wanna make sure that the color and the clarity is consistent. It's, the, it's what you've paid for, so the grade is correct. Whether it's stones that's claw set or bezel set, you wanna make sure that there's no warping or um, distortion um, around the stone setting. Bangles should have a nice spring to them, so put them on your wrist, squeeze them, make sure that it has a nice spring and it bounces back. Now, when or if you do find any defects on your jewellery, this is what I would recommend you doing. Take photos of the pieces. So typically, you know, just use your phone. Um, it's there, it's handy. Zoom up on the defect. So circle where you find the defect is. You want to make sure that the lighting is good, so zoom in. Um, typically what we would do is just put the piece under a lamp or better still just stand next to a window so you've got some natural light there. After that forward the images to your supplier and you can even create a spreadsheet so you've got the name or the code reference of the design along with the pictures. I wouldn't say to them um, what the terminology or the name of the defect is because sometimes, for example, cracking can look like porosity or vice versa. And also that isn't your responsibility. At the end of the day, if it's a manufacturing defect, it's up to the manufacturer to rectify the problem. When we quality check goods, we typically tend to wear white gloves. So that's something that you can just buy on Amazon. Um, along with a loop. So a loop will just help you really clearly see close up any potential defects. Again, you can get a loop for as little as five pounds on Amazon. Also take into account how the goods were packaged because sometimes when we mentioned about fine scratches, this can be caused by improper packaging during transit. If, for example, your jewellery isn't packaged properly, you might have, let's say, silver and silver hitting or rubbing against each other, which is going to cause some marks and scratches. For example, when we send necklaces to customers and we've got a pendant with a chain, the chain and the pendant is always going to be packaged separately. So we're going to wrap it with soft tissue um, and just to ensure that it doesn't hit against each other when it's shipped out. Also, if it's not just samples, but you've ordered quite a lot of goods from your suppliers, you also want to make sure that there's substantial padding in between the bags. So it's not just the jewellery itself that you need to be vigilant of. It's also when you receive your parcel and you can start doing some good quality checking from then. Throughout your communication to the supplier, obviously you want to be as polite and courteous as possible and ask what the next step is going to be. Now, if it's been concluded or established that these defects is um, the liability of the manufacturer, then you want to check with them how long it's going to take for them to repair, replace or exchange the piece for you because you might have a launch or an event in the future that you want to plan for so that you just don't want it to clash with when you receive the goods back. Hopefully you guys won't have to go through any of this, but because I know that this is such a huge area for manufacturers and they study quality checking, some of them day in, day out, I just want you to be a little vigilant when you receive your goods and that you're just a little bit prepared and aware of some potential quality issues that might crop up. So please stay tuned to all the future jewelry related videos. Subscribe, like or comment, and I'll see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.